Hi, and welcome to the book bar, where everything bookish is on the menu. I'm Anne Jeanette Barr, and today we're going to talk about what to read during the season of Lent. Before we get started with anything else, just a disclaimer for those of you who don't know me personally, this will be my third Lent in the Catholic Church. We joined the Catholic Church in, on Easter of 2018. However, before that, I was Protestant for 20 years, and before that, um, I would have answered differently depending on the week. I did not grow up in a religious household at all, and so like all of you, um, my religious beliefs have been a journey, and I uh, absolutely want you to keep watching and uh, feel this is a safe place for you, regardless of what your religious beliefs currently are, because if I didn't, that would be a little bit hypocritical. <laughs> I do want the book bar to be a safe place to discuss religion or any other topic, so I just ask that any of your comments be kind, and if you have a hard time um, finding kind things to say about um, religion or Lent in particular, just don't. Before we dive in on my thoughts on what you should read during Lent, just wanted to point out that I'm drinking this lovely tea from Novelties. Aren't these cute? So it's a little tin. I've got to put this down so that I can show you. And in the tin is a bag of tea. And in this particular case, it's Don Quixote tea. <laughs> and it's a black tea, and it's loose leaf, and it comes with a cute bookmark. And thank you to my friend Elizabeth from A Suitcase Full of Books. I will put her booktube channel um, in the comments. Uh, she gifted this to me, and it's very yummy. It is a black tea. I'm not giving caffeine up for Lent. And uh, I really like it, so this is definitely one of those. Uh, dangerous collectibles for bookish people. <laughs> As the title of this video suggests, I would love for this to be a video that has something for everyone, including people who are not Christian. So um, in case you're one of those, or a, a person from a Christian tradition that does not celebrate Lent, I just wanted to give a quick overview of what Lent is. So Lent is the 40 days between Ash Wednesday and Easter. Most agree that that 40-day number comes from the 40 days that Jesus fasted and was tempted in the desert, so it's a significant number. But if you look at your calendar or say, ask your phone, that 40-day number might be a little bit confusing. For instance, how many days are there between Ash Wednesday and Easter? 46 days. So. Why 46? Well, there are six Sundays during Lent, and so it's more accurate to say um, Lent is a season with 40 days of fasting in it, and we do not fast on Sunday. So that's your answer for that. And just to give you a little bit more of a definition for what the Lent season means, why it's significant, um, I'm going to put my tea down. and read just a little bit from a um, summarized version of the Catechism of the Catholic Church. So it says, Lent is an annual period of 40 days beginning on Ash Wednesday for Latin Catholics, which is set aside for penance, fasting, and almsgiving in preparation for the coming celebration of Easter. It's modeled in part on the 40 days that Jesus spent in the desert prior to beginning his public ministry. The penance, fasting, and almsgiving are meant to help lead the believer to ongoing conversion and a deeper faith in the Lord who redeemed us. So in short, it's just a season of preparation for Easter, which is kind of the culminate, culminative holiday um, in the Christian tradition when we believe that Jesus uh, rose again from the dead after being crucified on Good Friday. In the Western Church, Ash Wednesday is coming up really soon on Wednesday, February 17th. Um, and if you're an Eastern Christian, uh, Eastern Orthodox, you have another month almost to prepare. So hopefully you'll get this in time um, to have some ideas and some books lined up. Even if you're a Christian, Lent might be new to you. I know that there's been uh, definitely more interest that I've seen in the last few years about liturgical living or living along the calendar, and I think that that's true even outside of Christendom. I've seen a lot of friends um, across traditions interested in kind of marking our time, in celebrating the seasons, in having some structure to our um, annual existence, and I think that's all well and good. I think that we are um, paying more attention to uh, our lives and being intentional. So uh, I think 
um, all of us and all of the traditions that um, humans have can benefit from thinking seasonally in this way. Uh, so if you do come from a tradition like um, I did before I became Catholic, uh, I spent some time in several different Christian denominations, including Baptist churches and evangelical free and just non-denominational Christian churches that did not emphasize any major seasons other than Christmas. Um, do some some reading and study up and see if this is something you might want to incorporate in your life and don't feel like um, it's too late or you're uh, alone in being curious about this. I really do think this is a movement in our collective culture to be more intentional and live more seasonally. There are many Protestant traditions that do celebrate Lent. Um, for instance, I spent about 10 years in the Presbyterian Church, and that was part of our tradition. Anglicans celebrate Lent, Lutherans celebrate Lent. There's lots of people who, who do, and so I don't want this to be a video just for Catholics, and the books I'm going to recommend are not just Catholic, they're not even just Christian. So before I give you a lot of other ideas for what you might choose to read for Lent, I'm just going to show you what I plan to read. Now, 46 days is a little over a month and a half, and I typically read about four books a month. So what I've chosen for myself is not um, overly ambitious, but I also know that anything can happen in life and I may not get to all of these. So starting with my bare minimum, what I'm absolutely going to read is this book called Remember Your Death or Memento Mori um, by Sister Teresa Alethea Noble. Um, this is meant to be read throughout the whole Lenten season, and I bought this last year along with the journal that accompanies it, and then uh, who'da thunk 2020 was super memento mori anyway, so I only got through the introduction before I feel like life just did what it did in 2020. So this book, it says that um, it's meant to discover the ancient tradition of remembering death daily, um, encouraged by scripture and countless saints. And of course, throughout history, um, the Stoics and lots of people who are not Christian necessarily also have uh, focused on this idea of remembering your death, remembering you know, from dust you came into dust you'll return, remembering that our days on earth are finite. So that's this concept um, during Lent that I think we can all benefit from, of just remembering that we're mortal. And it's because it's specifically Christian, it includes scripture passages, Lenten meditations, and examine, which is something that Catholics do uh, in preparation for confession or just to have some time to reflect on our own selves and what we need to work on, and then prompts for journaling and prayer. And then this journal that she created to go with it has lots of... Um, quotes just to get you meditating, uh, and you could use this with or without the, um, the devotional, but that is going to be where I start my Lenten readings. I'm also definitely planning on reading this biography of Father Augustus Tolton. He um, is not a saint yet, but he is on his way. Pope Francis declared him a venerable uh, last year in 2019, which is one of the steps in the process of beatification or being recognized as a saint by the Catholic Church. And um, Father Tolton was the first black man recognized as black, ordained into the priesthood of the United States. So I'm looking down at my phone so I get the dates correctly. He was born in 1854 into slavery and he died in 1897, free and a Catholic priest. There were black priests before him in the United States, but they um, passed for white, and so he really set the uh, example and paved the way for black Catholics today. So I'm really interested in reading um, this story of him. I actually have a comic book, a graphic novel version of his life, so I have a little bit of an idea about Father Tolton's life, and also I've um, just read some short biographies, but I want to read this longer version this year uh, for sure. And I definitely want to read some kind of Memento Mori-ish uh, fiction um, this Lent also, and so I looked on my shelves and 
just chose uh, things that seemed like they might fit in with the tone and um, the two that I've chosen are actually one is uh, quite a large compilation of three stories by Flannery O'Connor. It's Wise Blood, The Violent Bear It Away, and Everything That Rises Must Converge. Flannery O'Connor um, was a Catholic of some controversy and she seemed to um, not be afraid to uh, write in a very honest voice about difficult subjects. So I decided she might be a good choice for tackling some maybe um, more contemplative fiction that challenges me but is not necessarily um, along the same lines of the other things I'll be reading during Lent. If you have a favorite Flannery novel, um, comment and let me know what it is, definitely. And then if I can get to it, it's not too long. I picked up The Dark Tower and Other Stories by C.S. Lewis. Um, it's, a series, it's a set of short stories, and there are six different stories in this book, so I thought maybe I would read it um, throughout Lent in between the other books that I read. And um, the one that inspired the title is the one that I'm most interested in because it has the character of Dr. Elwyn Ransom in it, who is the main character of C.S. Lewis's Space Trilogy. And if you have not read that and you're looking for a book, you could read that any time of year. It's actually three books of the trilogy, but um, it says that The Dark Tower is an eerie, highly entertaining fragment of a novel finding five men gathered secretly in a room at Cambridge to witness the workings of a chronoscope, an invention that does to time what the telescope does to space. The resulting sequence of bizarre events involves Dr. Elwyn Ransom, familiar to readers of Lewis's Out of the Silent Planet. And the next two books are on my shelf to read in 2021, and I'm just going to play them by ear. One is Take Good Care of the Garden and the Dogs by Heather Lindy. She's a local author. Um, and she writes obituaries for uh, a newspaper in Haines. And I know that this book tackles uh, life and death issues in her signature style, I'm sure, which is not at all morose. Um, she, she balances um, really deep thinking and hope very well. I really enjoy reading her writing. Um, and uh, the back of this says, her idea of spirituality is rooted in community. And in Take Good Care of the Garden and the Dogs, she explores faith and forgiveness, loss and devotion, as well as totem pole raising, salmon canning, and other distinctly Alaskan adventures. So uh, I think this would be a good Memento Mori read, and I'm just going to see if I can get to it, but I will read it this year. And then the last one is Grieving Together, A Couple's Journey Through Miscarriage by Laura Kelly Fanucci and Franco David Fanucci. Um, I will talk more about grief in my suggestions for what to read this year, but um, this kind of grief, um, loss of children, uh, really shaped my 2019 and 2020, and I've just put off reading something to help me deal with it, not that I haven't dealt with it, but Lent is one of those times when you deal with stuff like that. So again, this one's kind of on my, um, we'll see if we get to it list. Okay, so now my ideas for you. Regardless of which tradition you come from, if you're looking for books to read for Lent, you might consider the Catholic Church's um, emphasis on three major points during Lent, which are prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. So prayer is pretty self-explanatory. Fasting can mean, of course, from food, but it also can just mean doing less of something so that you can focus on things that are important in your life. I heard someone suggest to fast from complaining about COVID, <laughs> which is a great idea. So if you're thinking about reading for fasting, you may choose um, to, to read a book that will help you in whatever discipline that you um, feel like you're lacking or read an inspiring story about someone who is good at something that you're not. And that almsgiving just means caring for people who are less fortunate than you. So that can be giving of your money or your time. So a great suggestion for reading about almsgiving or on the theme of almsgiving is to read a book that might help you to confront poverty, um, a different kind of poverty than you're familiar with perhaps, or um, um, something that you feel that you need more exposure to and or read a story about someone who uh, was 
um, good at tackling poverty, someone inspiring that you know cared for uh, the poor or people who were less fortunate than them. Some other ideas for Lenten reading would be books that help you think about things of God. So that could be a theology book. It could be just a book about general um, spirituality or relationships with God. If you're someone who is still uh, considering what you believe about God, you may choose Lent to dig deeper into that. Or if you're someone who has been religious for a long time, you may choose to read someone else's viewpoint about God. Um, other things would be, again, biographies of people who lived their lives for God, to get an example of someone who took that part of their life very seriously. Another idea would be to just read books that help you grapple with death. Um, this pandemic has certainly made all of us think about our time on earth a little differently and has helped a lot of us take some things less for granted. So this could be a great year to spend some time thinking about what we'll do with the time we have left or take some time to deal with kind of the aftermath of um, loss and grief. So I of course have some suggestions and I'm just going to work through some books that I think would be great to read during Lent. These are in no particular order because I just grabbed all the things on my shelves that I thought, oh yeah, that one would be good for someone to read. So some of these are Catholic, some of these are Christian, some of these are not not either necessarily. So this first set of books um, is by Sheldon Van Alken, and it is a Severe Mercy and Under the Mercy. These are older books, um, and I read them in college, and a lot of Protestants will be familiar with the first one, A Severe Mercy, and maybe not necessarily the second, which was not as widely published. It is a story about a man and his wife, Davy, Sheldon and Davy, um, but specifically their relationship with C.S. Lewis. So if you are a Lewis fan or if you are a convert to Christianity, these might be particularly interesting to you because it's about how their relationship with C.S. Lewis and their relationship with intellectuals in Oxford formed their faith and showed them a different side of spirituality and particularly particularly of Christianity than they had previously known. And the idea, um, uh, their previous idea about faith was kind of wrapped up in a very romantic um, spiritualism, I, I guess you could say. And it's a slow telling of how they came to um, a different idea with letters from C.S. Lewis intertwined, which is really interesting, but also it's a story of loss. You find out really early that um, Sheldon's wife, Davy, passes. So it's, uh, it's his story of grappling with her death and his new faith, and it's really moving, uh, impactful for just about anyone who could read it, I'm sure. Um, and then this book, under the Mercy is a follow-up which will be particularly interesting to Catholics. So if you've read this, but not this, you know, choose the other one. Um, and if you're Catholic, uh, definitely try to get them both. This next book is one that my friend Haley Stewart from Carrots for Michaelmas recommends often and widely, and I just saw her recommend this on an article that I will post in the description below um, for what to read during Lent, and I couldn't agree more. Um, this is Kristen Lavenstrader by Sigurd Unset, and this is a translated Norwegian novel that is huge, or you can read it in three parts, and it is... Um, about uh, a woman, Kristen, who lived during um, medieval times in Norway. So it's, um, uh, it is a novel, it's not a biography. It was written in 1927 and it was written in Norwegian, so you'll have to find a translation, which means you won't be able to read this gorgeous copy <laughs> that I'm holding, which is definitely written in Norwegian, which you probably can't see from this far away. But this was, um, a gift from my sister who traveled to Norway and uh, so I just had to hold it up because it's wonderful and it's all in one copy um, and it has a picture of Sigrid here in the front copy front cover but um, you can find it uh, in several different translations and in either one volume set or a three volume set this is the translation and the copy that I read and it comes um, in three 
All right, I'll grab the others here from my shelf. So it, it is a, a three volume set in this particular translation. Um, now Haley says that you should read the the Tina Nunnally translation, and that's not this translation. She says that's the very best one. Um, I didn't really struggle with this necessarily, but if this one was good and that one's supposedly so much better, then it's just good all around. Um, so this book does have quite a few end notes and maps and things like that in the back. It's definitely a book that you kind of have to work to read, which makes it perfect for Lent, I think, because it's an engrossing epic tale of a woman's life from her early teens, living with her family, um, and her struggles with her expectations, uh, the expectations of her and of her faith and her relationship with um, the, the man in her life. And then it continues on uh, with um, her, her life as she gets married and has children. And um, it, it's a sweeping story of her entire life. And so you feel while you're reading it like you're really getting to know a real person. And it's just beautiful prose. And I honestly think men or women would love this book if you enjoy historical or literary uh, works of fiction. So I think this could be a good thought-provoking read for Lent for just about anyone. Um, and since it's a classic, if you're interested in it, there are um, so many reviews out there. It's easy to get your hands on copies and also to, to read what other people are saying about it. So check that one out. If you're thinking about reading a book about prayer this Lent, you might actually choose a prayer book, a book of prayers. Um, you could choose something like the Aquinas Prayer Book, which has prayers and hymns of St. Thomas Aquinas. You could choose a, a few of them a day just to pray through and think through. Or you could choose to do something like tackle the Liturgy of the Hours with a guide, or just try and pray the Liturgy of the Hours, which is a Catholic practice of praying all day, um, and especially in the morning and at night. Um, and it's not just priests and religious who do it, lots of lay people also pray the Liturgy of the Hours. Or if you're a Protestant or looking for uh, another book, I recommend this one called A Praying Life by Paul Miller. Um, I really found this one challenging and also encouraging. The subtitle is Connecting with God in a Distracted World. Oh, <laughs> it's so cold. I had to go and warm up my tea again because I've been talking for too long. <laughs> And I mentioned reading biographies several times. Um, I think this is a great time to read through a saint biography, and I just picked a few from my shelves that I think would be a good fit. Uh, if you don't have a lot of time, um, definitely something like St. Francis of Assisi by G.K. Chesterton, something that will be beautiful and inspiring, um, but not, not super, super long. Or the autobiography of St. Therese of Lisieux, uh, which is also called The Story of a Soul. This is a old beat up copy, but it is, I read somewhere, one of the best selling books of all time in the world. So maybe not in the United States, but in the world, this is one of the best selling books of all time. And I had not heard of it until I became Catholic. And uh, we actually have a, um, the shrine of St. Therese, or we, most of us say St. Therese because American, um, <laughs> here in uh, Alaska in Juneau and it's a beautiful place and so I was intrigued for sure but um, this woman experienced so much pain and loss and died at an early age and stayed so fervently devoted to her ideals and also to um, to the people around her and she was humble uh, despite being as a youngster feisty and kind of unruly and uh, her parents are also saints and so she's just one of those people that you want to know about for sure and um, this is a very inspiring and not too long book. For my Protestant friends, um, I definitely would recommend ch picking up something from the Church Fathers if you haven't read any of that. I know I didn't read any Church Fathers until maybe college. Uh, it wasn't it wasn't something that my particular Christian denomination emphasized very much, and I found that uh, it was really um, helpful for my understanding of Christianity as a whole to read some of the early writings of people like Ignatius and Athanasius and Augustine or Augustine, um, just people who were really formative in early Christianity. Or you could choose someone more contemporary that's meaningful for, for you. I know one year for rent, for rent, for Lent, 
I know one year for Lent I read um, about Bonhoeffer's life and death, and that was very moving for me and very appropriate for Lent. Um, so just choose someone to focus on during this uh, during this season that inspires you by their life and their death. And speaking of death, <laughs> um, something like A Grief Observed by C.S. Lewis, this is his kind of musings about death after the, the death of his wife, um, could be really helpful. Or, you know, choose a, choose a book about whatever topic I, um, that you're struggling with. Like I said, I'm, I'm going to be reading a book about miscarriage. I think it's a good time to have to kind of uh, wrestle through those ideas and how they affect our lives. And if you're not a Christian or you're looking for something that's not necessarily Christian, I uh, covered this book in my 2020 um, overview. This was one of my top books from last year. You may have already uh, read it. It's been out for a while. It's Unbroken by Laura Hillenbrand, and it is the story of um, a man uh, who was a prisoner of war in World War II, and it's just beautifully written and heartbreaking, and it's not something I would want to read in the more joyful season, which actually I did. I read it during Christmas time unintentionally, but it would be perfect for Lent for anyone who hasn't read that already. And then just another one that I picked up from my shelves that I think might be a really lovely Lent read is The Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. He was famous for saying things like um, he was praying while washing dishes or that washing dishes was an act of prayer for him. And I think it's just a really um, inspiring thought to recognize that all of our daily actions are meaningful purposeful, and not apart from our spiritual lives. So for instance, one quote from him is, My prayers are nothing other than a sense of the presence of God. My soul is simply insensible at that time to anything but divine love. When the appointed time of prayer has passed, I find no difference, because I still continue with God, praising and blessing him with all my might, so that I might pass my life in continual joy. So uh, he deals in that book a lot with um, uh, pain and suffering and devoting oneself to God while also doing the dishes and sweeping the floor and living life. And I think um, a lot of us are living in a very strange kind of mixed up time where we don't have that delineation of church time, prayer time, work time, um, you know, community time anymore. And this is a really great reorienting book that I think would be good for Lent as well. And I'm actually planning on handing this to my teenage son for Lent. So if you have this one, pick that up. And I know a lot of uh, Christians of all traditions who have found this a really meaningful read. I'd love to hear what you plan on reading for Lent and if that's a tradition that you have continued for many years or if that would be if this would be the first year that you might try and do some spiritual reading during Lent. Um, if you have some recommendations for me for the future, definitely leave them in the comment. And while you're leaving a comment telling me what you're reading, don't forget to tell me what's in your cup. <laughs>